my gosh, in secret. Yeah, and even like when it comes to my future boyfriend and like how do I launch him, like soft launch or like when do I announce that? <laughs> like so many people keep it a secret and until they're like engaged like that's a thing now or like I don't know what's the vibe we're like the coaching the online industry and we're talking about soft launch how do we launch our point <laughs> soft launch hard launch in soft launch uh, yeah no I think I just feel like hey guys well I think I would be talking about like the dates and then um, me too. And me then too. Be like, hey, and like, where I would be filming the dates when it got to the time where it's more like we're seeing each other consistently. Um, I would agree. not be a surprise. But not giving details, being kind of like when I'm like seeing someone or I'm ex having these experiences and then like later um, revealing it. Yeah, I think that's the yeah, vibe. I think I'd be sharing from the moment I met them to like I. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Um, well, not maybe not the moment I met them. I mean by like when we are like. Uh, I met yeah. this guy today. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one. That would be cool though to look back at like how you documented it. You know, because like. So now, well, I feel like back in the past, I'd hide my Instagram from the person that I'm dating. But oh, now yeah, I feel like, no, no way. I, I'm a business coach. I'm a life coach. I do this. Like, it's the my first Instagram. thing yeah, they yeah, need to know. Exactly. I think we talked about how even Monica, when she was saying, um, like, like she just gave her Instagram out to him. Um, and she was saying how, if he's the right person, he's not going to be like weirded out or like shy away. He'd be like, exactly. Oh my God, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to, it's like a good filter and test of like, cause your person that's meant for you is going to be like, Oh my God, this woman is incredible. I love what she's doing. If, your Instagram's deterring someone, then it's a good thing yeah. to know that he's not the one. And it's good to know that right off the 100%. bat. Like, you know, you want to hide those things. And when I went to the conscious mm -hmm. speed editing, literally like every guy, like only the guys that I like wanted to pursue something further, I gave my number, but like every guy I gave my Instagram. And I'm like, I love that. that. And I wasn't scared of that. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody to this episode. We kind of just started recording mid chat because we've got the momentum and vibes Sorry, going. I but you, oh my gosh, I feel like you are a little bit. <laughs> if you're watching the video, then you'll see um, the beautiful, gorgeous, radiant Brenda Lee here, who is in Bali. She's no longer living in Melbourne. Um, having the time of her life. There are a couple earthquakes as well <laughs> recently. Earthquakes, like actually one. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> to like tell you or ask you later on um, but, um yeah earthquakes like the first one happened when i it was like 2 a.m 2 30 a.m i was just in bed and i'm like i won't oh i woke up i'm like something's moving like <laughs> something's moving place is shaking but it's just very like slow and i'm like yeah I experienced okay. earthquakes before when i lived in la i'm like oh an earthquake oh <laughs> were those like pretty well do you remember the one in melbourne that happened recently that was like quite a big one that was like the biggest for sure because i've lived in melbourne my whole entire life we don't get earthquakes normally yeah that one was scary i thought oh I, God, I was... i've never like experienced an earthquake in australia i didn't think it happened in melbourne yeah um i just thought so no, it's not supposed to <laughs> like a giant like they were pushing something like very heavy across the hallway i'm like that's why the walls and ceiling and everything is shaking literally <laughs> at the beginning too i'm like is that just like the washing machine like spin cycle or something <laughs> and and then my mom at the time was like katie is that you jumping around i'm like how freaking heavy do you think i am to like move the whole house <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone expects. They're probably thinking like, "Oh, is that construction? No, oh, is someone moving? And so what's happening?" Yeah. Um, but because that's your first. I was in a yeah. mastermind call when that happened. Oh and my I, like, god! I could see my kitchen like shaking, <laughs> and I'm like, "Sorry, guys, there's an earthquake currently happen happening. Be right back." <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, should I react to this? No. <laughs> 
that's the thing like i don't know what to do either because we're not like taught that versus like in japan and stuff they literally have like earthquake drills and like i ran outside but apparently that's like not what you're supposed to do i guess you supposed to run towards like where there are arch the door the door yeah yeah the that's door frame because it's yeah, like supported it's supported and has the like poles stilts i don't yeah the, biggest, the beans yeah. and um, yeah and that would be the safest place um to like stand or wherever <laughs> yeah people who live in earthquake prone place you can let us know <laughs> your friend all yeah that was surprising and yeah the second one happened but i was just like i didn't i'm like yeah like i didn't for some reason i thought it's just gonna be a minor one like in my mind i never thought it yeah. would be one where i would get hurt or like it would be serious mm -hmm. i don't know why I, yeah I just, I just yeah to intuition yeah. you I already know well day. i don't know <laughs> yeah about bali like is it do they just get minor ones or do they also get like crazy ones too the seven point something but where oh. I was, it was like pretty low, uh, but it happened in like somewhere in Indonesia. But like, I think even okay. for me, I thought, oh, Bali is just all of Indonesia. But Bali is just one small No, place. Bali is yeah, just the yeah. island. So yeah. Of Indonesia. Um, mm -hmm. So it didn't affect us that much. But um, yeah, it's just so... <laughs> Funny how I'm like, oh, there's earthquakes here. It's something we just have to deal with here. But you wouldn't think that yeah. as a tourist or anything. You're just like, oh, the rice field. I didn't oh, think of it either. <laughs> the monkeys, yeah. 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 <clears throat> but awesome. Well, glad you were safe and nothing happened to you during yes, the earthquake I'm because all good. I'm <laughs> devastated. <laughs> My BFF friend are eaten up by an earthquake and falling. Awesome. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, let's like um, introduce yourself and maybe also like talk about just how we met and how yeah. we got here onto the podcast. So I think it's kind of cool. Thank you for having me on here. I'm Brenda. Um, <laughs> this is like, like an interview introduction. Um, I'm a life and business coach, so I help women like upgrade their energy and yeah help them claim more in business love and life i love talking about relationships we both do feminine masculine mm -hmm. energy um and i love traveling i love food you'll always see my stories oh yeah i, I can attest food. to that um yeah and my favorite thing to say whenever i'm eating is oh my god <laughs> you, you <hear> that <laughs> a lot. Like, good guys <laughs> oh my god this is so good guys um so that's like my line um but yeah katie and i met like i originally found like you just popped up on my explore page one day i'm like oh mm -hmm. my goodness like this was the beginning of me like um seeing more people in my area when i moved to melbourne i was like oh my god finally someone young that's in the, <laughs> finally <laughs> someone young. In the industry and she's killing it and she like loves travel loves all this stuff same as i do um, and that's when I started following you. And then I invested in your quantum attraction masterclass. And then yeah. I was like, oh my God, what is all this quantum new thing stuff? <laughs> um, and then obviously like, uh, yeah, it just progressed there and I just read your content. And then, um, yeah, started chatting to you as well through the DMs. And then one day, um, Hey, you messaged me and you're like, Hey, Brenda, mm. um, just wondered if you wanted to like meet in person. I was like, Oh my yeah. goodness, this is the first time meeting someone from like the industry reaching out on Instagram. And Yay, I, I really that. wanted to meet. I'm like, Oh my goodness, it'd be so cool to be like friends with someone who's also like into what I'm into. And not even that, like, I felt like you had like that mindset and you were like, going for your like I, I listened to your podcast and you were so like it's inevitable my success and i love people yes. who have that mindset too like that self-belief is so like so many people i think that lack that and then like, you have that mm. and you're like no like i'm just gonna win at life at anything i do <laughs> and that's why yeah, we connected and got along so well met up in person and we just like yeah can't stop talking and it was yeah so, i feel like what we talk about is so magnetic. <laughs> like, by the end of the like, oh my God, I need to sleep. We talked about so much. So in integration. Literally, after every time we hung out in person, 
I felt like, oh, like we learned something new or like we talked about something and it, it was, it, yeah, it's been oh amazing. Oh my gosh, we would like chat for like eight hours. A very like, long time. time, yeah. And I love, we went to the spa, we went to like cool bars mm. and yeah, soon after. Hi, yeah, tea, yeah. Soon after, oh, okay. we, I mean, we got, we started getting close and then I'm like, oh, I'm leaving Bali <laughs> I know the timing, but it was perfectly meant to be. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of moving back to Melbourne. Um, oh, you are. You tell me that. That's the, 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 the shock bomb that you're dropping on me. I'm like, what? What do you mean? You said you're like, we're done with Melbourne. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to my natural solo traveling the world. Oh, yeah. You've got to talk to the story first. <laughs> confused what is happening Melbourne, now she left now she's coming back <laughs> but yes guys i am solo traveling the world and um yeah i grew three six-figure business online so i started off fitness coaching and brand design i still have the brand design going and now business coaching um anyways <laughs> right back. um yeah so after six weeks in Ubud bali now um well sorry guys i'm still going to be living in Bali, then going to Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and at the end, New York. Um, but yeah, after even the so six cool. weeks here, I don't know if it's been because I've been in the mastermind of my coach and then another like energy coach, like so much has been integrated and like it's just sped up like what I've wanted and it's just coming to me so fast. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I want to buy my house, my dream house in uh, Melbourne. Yeah. And yeah, wow. like after this year and after New York, I'm gonna probably <clears throat> travel back to Brisbane to my parents for a bit and then I'm gonna mm -hmm. think about where I'm gonna buy my home. And mm -hmm. I yeah, I don't But definitely in Melbourne, yeah, is that I don't the vibe? Myself, I don't know in Queensland, wow. but like Melbourne just minus maybe the fact that the weather sometimes is too cold yeah i was gonna say because that i feel like that's why you left as well because yes. like the weather and it's stuff. interesting because after i moved from melbourne you you really do pick up all the things that you i guess took for granted um yeah like, home. like from the fir first thought because mm -hmm. we're in third right <laughs> And like, yeah. and I, I was craving like, oh, my walks around the lake, like, sorry, the river, mm. um, the botanical gardens and how easily accessible things were. I actually did our like walk the other day. That was like our Brenda and my like thing. We would just walk around like the river. And then the other day I was in the city. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to do the same thing. And I was like thinking about you and I didn't tell you, but I'm like, this is, I'm, just, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing the tradition. <laughs> And the other one was um, heading to, oh my God, what's it called? Brunetti's. <laughs> For some reason, every time we hung out, we end up at Brunetti's. <laughs> I'm like, oh, girl, I need a <laughs> Not there. Um, but mm. yeah, no, I think, and you also, like, I think I had the learning belief as well that, um, there weren't as many people in the industry in Melbourne, in Australia. And then when you started going to those mm. events and I was like, yeah, yeah like, you're building this thing up in your mind um, or like certain aspects that Melbourne didn't have, but Melbourne actually has so much. <laughs> oh my so gosh, much. so much. You just got to find 100%. it. Because even for me, like only this year did I start mm. to actually go into the spiritual communities in person and go to the events and the ecstatic dance. And I've like met so many people, mm -hmm. other coaches, business owners, but especially during COVID and stuff, like, cause that's when we started our businesses, obviously like I wasn't going out mm -hmm. and networking in person, but now it's like, I went to a Spotify podcast <laughs> event and all these You'll things. You'll have to tell me about that. <laughs> met Tony now. Yeah. And I'm like collabing with one of the women that I met there. And then I went to Joe Dispenza, met some people, went to Gabby Bernstein the other day, met some more people, saw the girl that I met at Spotify. like the the like what's it called just the intertwining yeah. and the connections the community is just so incredible and yeah I think like I would be so keen to just go with you oh to all god. these events when you yes. get back oh my god to and introduce you to all of it I'm doing here I'm like it'd be so much fun with Katie <laughs> and like, yes oh my god what's it called the ecstatic dance I would love ecstatic to dance. dance with you <laughs> me too <laughs> 
Oh, it's the duo. It's the duo. It's the duo. It's the Katie and Brenda. Katie and Brenda show. Welcome back. Oh my god. We'll look back one day and it'll be like an actual thing. Yes. Like imagine where it all started. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. So but cute. Yes, no, I'm excited. I think next year. Back yeah, to your sorry, story. Next, yeah, next year I'm excited to um. Yeah, now I love traveling, 100%. Like, even just sticking mm. with me, it seems like a little, but I move so quick, like, what you learn. Oh, my gosh. And um, yeah. even in the two coaches that I've invested, like, I've learned my lessons so fast and, like, stopped all my patterns and all my limiting beliefs so fast um, mm. that, yeah, now it's just cracked open, like, a new brand, a new, like, way of looking at things. But, yeah, I just missed, like, a first world country stuff, you know? I'm just going to put I miss like the clean roads, the wide roads. Um, I mean, obviously Bali is so much to offer. Like I just had an amazing acai bowl for six dollars fifty Australian. Like back home, literally like, twenty bucks. Or something. <laughs> but yeah, no, I want a good home base. I'm excited to like buy my dream furniture and like have my own mm. garden and like just everything and just like feel so homey. Just even have my podcast set up, my own office, and and by yes. like, Cali over and like build roots. Oh my God. Like I'm excited to build roots. Yeah, like, from there travel, but have my home base. Exactly, mm. you can have it all, right? So for me, the mm. same. Like I don't think I would like to sell all my stuff and live out of a suitcase. The props to you, but like I need a bit more grounding. But I still like want to travel. Mm. Like you know, I just went like a month in Europe early this year. I want to go again and like. We have our property in Cairns. I'll probably live there in the winter. And like, we think that we have to pick between one or the other. Like I definitely did think it was like, I could either be full nomadic and sell all my stuff or I have to be like grounded and like, I can't move. Mm. And it's like, well, why can't you have both? Exactly. Both yeah. No, I had to go through that. Like in that moment of time that Brenda just thought a certain way. Um, mm. But I like looking back now, I'm like, yeah, I needed to do that to know what it's like. I love, yeah. I think doing that gave me like, so much freedom because I feel so light with like nothing. Yes. Like I can move anywhere exactly. I want. <laughs> I'm excited to go to all the places, even though it's the start of where yeah. um, on my journey. But I'm excited to like go to Singapore, Thailand, all of that, and New York. Um, and I was gonna say, mm. you should come to New York. I know. I need to. I've actually like never been to America except for Hawaii. Oh like I haven't been to anywhere yeah. else. And Brenda keeps telling me I will love it, and she's trying to drag me there. <laughs> Brenda. I'm converted. <laughs> yeah. Because you also said your dream was to live in America, like to move there, find your American husband, and it's all going to be your vibe. It's got some beautiful accent. Born American fiance. Oh. <laughs> My either it's either he's either Canadian or American. I just I'm hundred percent visualizing oh that I love voice, that. the huskiness. <laughs> but yes, um yeah, my first home will be in Australia, my home base, and then eventually I would love yes. and the second yes. one. And the third like, one you are you gonna buy one in Bali still or like yes, what's yes, the vibe? Yeah, just Bali. one in exactly. everywhere. Um yeah, I mean so everywhere. Just excited to like you said, <laughs> like have like a home base, but like you can live in so many different areas of the world. Um mm. and yeah, I'm just so excited to yeah, just I feel like the last couple of weeks it's really I feel like I had goals, but then now they're like times 10. Like I, you know, when you yes. feel like you've increased your, I guess, your energetic maximum of what you believe is available to you. Like, even though you've done heaps of work, it's quite high, but then now mm -hmm. it's like getting even higher and you're like, oh. I like to call that like making your ceiling like the floor. Yes. It's because we all have a ceiling and it doesn't mean your ceiling is like necessarily too low. Like even for us, like our ceiling is like high, but there's still more. Like I like to always think of like that dream that we want, that money goal or success goal, like amount of properties times that yeah. by 10, because that our goal is someone else's minimum. You know what I mean? Of like, okay, if our goal is 10 million, someone else is like, I couldn't live with 10 million. That's too little. And I like get into that mindset. That's like one of my favorite activities to just like expand because you can always keep going. Yes. Oh, one hundred percent. Like I agree. Like even moving here, like everyone around me like works online. Like they're traveling the world, works online. And if this was back in Australia, so many people would think, 
wow, that's so far fetched. Like it's so like you're traveling the world, mm. you're working online. Like how do you do that? Like, but to us, it's like yeah, but like you nothing know, just, like, else is like you know. <laughs> yeah what do you think? yeah like, everyone's exactly. doing it um and i think being in this environment i'm like okay what's the next level <laughs> and then what's the level mm. above that you know <laughs> yeah so you see even for that in melbourne of like traveling the world and making money that was considered to you like special or whatever because you yeah. hadn't you didn't have other people mm. around mm. you but then when you have other people around it no longer feels special so then you're like well what then what's 100%, that next yeah so your environment dictates what is unique or like what is your standard mm. yeah. even how we met and right before you messaged me i let go of a friend where i felt like no it's not gonna cut it like i i'm so like for yeah friendships because i know like i had to let go of so many friendships even from uni where it's like nine year relationships where um they mm. were still i guess in the nine to five mindset and like oh they, they would tell me like plenty of times like the same problems like I don't like where I'm working or like, oh, like work, oh, it's Monday. And I'm just like, I don't fucking have that problem. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, it's like, I love Mondays. And there's nothing wrong with like them in their own yeah. thing, but to then hear that all the time if you're in a relation, your friendship, but like that's all you're hearing yeah. about, it's kind of like, well, like, what am I getting from this? Oh, like, nothing wrong with the nine to five. Like, I feel like that's so needed mm -hmm. in the world, but just, I just feel yeah. like, we have so much power in like our problems that we keep like, you know, repeating to ourselves. Yes. Like why, why don't you change something about it? Why, don't, <laughs> why, why don't you make mm. something happen or change your circumstance or talk to your manager or figure yeah. a different situation out so that you're happy with how much you make and the life you leave, life you lead. Mm. Um, so yeah, I had to let go of friendship and um, yeah, right after I did that, you messaged me and I just knew like, you know, when you let go of good, um, you have to let go of good for great to come in and you were great. That's such a <laughs> and good point. Yeah. And you were aligned to me and my life and where I was heading and it was just so easy. Like our conversations, we just like get each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was yeah because we talked like for a while mm. online and i didn't know that you like you know dropped that friend yeah. energetic and i've been wanting to like message you to hang out for oh, ages but it wasn't yeah. until that day that for some reason i was like today's the day yes. i'm gonna i'm gonna message and reach out and it's just like energetically obviously i was feeling mm. that that your like your channel had like opened wider because mm. you like left the good for the yeah. great I think it's yeah definitely it's all in the air it's like it's in the mm. energy and like you can't like tangibly see it but like you feel it like when you close you it, it and then you like opening up your heart for like something new to come through more aligned and yeah now I can't imagine like now I just only see friendships that like are doing what we're doing and I feel like yeah well, you've made so many friends yes, in Bali yes. that are like, the like there's so many like healers, therapists, and like um coaches here. Like there's a, like I met an abundance coach the other day. It was just like it's so like not like they're all congregated. <laughs> it's yes, the hub. Yes, yes, it's a church of <laughs> online mm. um, coaches and service providers. Um, yeah, it's crazy the community here. Mm. But yeah, I think um. I learned a lot with like friendships and even yeah we were talking about I like back in the day I used to um be so like wanting to hang out with friends and like so actually attached to friends and now I'm like yeah. so like I think because I put so much time and effort and pouring into myself and um knowing what I where I want to go and the life I want to lead like uh, unless there's a friend that's like, growing alongside with me it's like I am not that attached anymore like I was in the past like now yeah. it's effortless mm. exactly mm. yeah I love that because you're more leaned back versus mm. you are constantly going for them in that anxious yeah. way and like making sure they're meeting you where you're at as yeah well. no I had to like I had so many conversations with my like back in the day those types of friendships where I was like oh, I feel like I'm always like planning stuff or like doing stuff for us. And, mm -hmm. um, you just, you don't seem to like, um, like I would love for you to like do like plan stuff too. Or like, I always felt like they didn't want to like hang out with me as I wanted to hang out with them. And now it's like yeah. completely different. 
And that is also like in our love lives too has changed so much because oh, how you do one thing is how you do everything. <laughs> yes, and, exactly. I actually just recorded an episode yesterday on like being anxiously attached mm-hmm. in friendships and people don't realize like if you're anxiously attached in a romantic relationship, you might be the same in friendships yes. too. I think it's the same, like, it's the same thing across, like, friendships and even, like, yeah. money as well. Um, money, yeah, love, Yeah, true. Friendships. And clients. Yeah. You can be anxious to clients mm. of, like, I don't want my clients to leave or, like, clinging on to, like, a prospect. Yes, 100%. I think um, so many people, I guess, like, they're checking the DMs or, like, if someone's going to, like, yeah. find a client, like, if, are they going to, um, am I going to close on that sale whatever. It's just, like, lean mm. back. And just focus on your mission yeah. and just adding value and just having fun with your life. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, what's been happening? <laughs> I was gonna ask yeah. you, since you've like changed in that and you've kinda of, you've kinda of told me about some of your <laughs> like, you know, what's happening with the online dating and all that, but like any news recently of like seeing any guys or anything in Bali? No. Because and it's not like um like for the first time like yeah actually like for the first time the last few months this year I felt so in my purpose and me doing me Mm -hmm. that I don't even think about it that much really like I'll like I'm so open to like meeting people talking to people but I'm so attached to like oh like he's gonna come talk to me or oh like like is anything gonna happen with any of the guys but I just know what my king is like gonna feel like, how it's gonna like come into my life and it's gonna be so effortless and I'm just like doing me. And he like, it's like, we're not like finding them and chasing them. Our king is coming and he's gonna yeah. meet us at the right time, the most divine exactly. timing. And we don't need to like do anything. Obviously like put yourself out there and have an open heart. Exactly. Be open. Um, yeah. <laughs> from whatever you need to heal um so you're preparing for your king um but yeah no i just been so like concentrating on my business on my own inner work and um growing and yeah i just haven't really thought about that here like you meet so many people and so many friends yeah um, like i don't even think that many people go on the apps here that much because you're talking to really? people so much the, in person. Yeah, the connection is just so yeah. easy. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, isn't that so interesting? Because like in Melbourne, like you lived in the city, but I feel like sometimes the city, like the city of Melbourne can be like the most disconnecting place because everyone's just in their own thing that no one's like talking to each other or like, I and like you go on public transport, everyone's just like on their phone and there's like that lack of connection that unless it's like, forced yeah. then it doesn't happen but then while it's like a totally different so vibe different like because i'm living in a co-living co-working right now like you go to the kitchen you make food like i just met a girl naomi she's a, like online therapist and um she's from canada she's japanese and we just started chatting while i was going to heat up my burger <laughs> and we just added each other on instagram and like i meet like at least two to five new people like it's like a day what? compared back to melbourne like you mentioned everyone's like it's so different. Like I wish that energy would replicate itself in Melbourne. I'm sure in different spots it does, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna in say. different areas. But where I was living, um, yeah, like you mentioned, it's just like a lot of public transport. Looking down in the phones, headphones in. Um, mm. even though like off to work, even yeah. I would go to the co-working space at WeWork, but like I would still talk to people. Mm. But it wouldn't be like how it is here, where everyone's so. Yeah. I don't know if it's just the energy of the island where people are just here to like grow their businesses, meet people. They're here on a holiday. So their mindset and like heart is like so open and they look up. Yeah. They're not looking down the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I definitely can like feel that vibe in Melbourne of like I'm in my own mm. zone, like I'm going to work or like people walk really mm. fast. Like that's why for me, I'm like, I don't want to live in the CBD because it's just like I need that more like – chill place of life where people aren't just like so focused on work and that's it but as you said like you just got to go out and Mm. find those places so I didn't know either that you know there were these beautiful spiritual Mm. communities in Melbourne and you walk in and literally like everyone talks to you 
Like everyone's yeah. making friends. No one's on their phone. I will like every time I go to, to an event, I literally add someone on mm. Instagram or like I'm friends with someone. And it's just like so incredible and just being intentional about that. And whatever you want, it exists out there. Like so many people just say like, oh, the good men don't exist or mm. these spiritual people don't exist. Like I heard so many people like, where do you find, like they just aren't spiritual people. I'm like, you're looking at the wrong places because there's so many yes. like go to ecstatic dance there's a hundred people yes. in dance school and you're telling me there's no spiritual people well, here. I, like, I had to experience what that is like in melbourne like the spiritual scene like yeah when you, when you come to wood oh my god it's like it's so weird. oh my god i'll be like it's overwhelmed so yeah like the hippie like, vibe what planet am i on sometimes you're just like you it doesn't even feel like you're in bali though because it's so many yeah. like westerners that come here it looks like you're in gold coast or like somewhere else <laughs> oh literally it's like the second literally, australia <laughs> but, uh, like on an island it <laughs> is yeah, yeah. it is island. yes two times i went there it was like, <laughs> everything's an island. <laughs> Giant island yeah it is yeah yeah well i mean oh uh, everything <laughs> everything is <laughs> That's so funny. But no. But yeah, no, that'll be cool. And like, I remember when I went to Bali, yeah, everyone was just like Australian. And that's just, it was just the vibe. And like all the cafes like owned by Australian people, hotels, like beach cuts, everything. But yeah, no, I'm excited to see that in Melbourne because it's funny how like it's been six weeks, but the person I was when I was hanging out with you, like that whole spiritual mm. scene and ecstatic dances that was so new to me like yes I remember yeah. inviting you but you're like oh I'm yeah. moving and packing and I'm like yeah. okay we'll chill but I felt like oh like Brenda needs to get into this like, scene I, and like in a way Bali forced me because everyone kept asking me you should go yeah in the yoga have you done this we thing have you done this <laughs> yeah can't escape it. Like, <laughs> that's why I went I'm like everyone's going it looks so cool um but yeah, so it was so di- I was so different back then, and now I'm so like now I know what all this stuff. <laughs> this is normal. Yeah. Well, you told me like today, like you bought Oracle cards for the first time, and like you're doing that every day too. Yeah, I bought it like a week ago or something. Um, and I, yeah, I've been doing it um every morning now, right after like I visual meditate, do my journaling, gratitude, whatever, and it's been like so amazing. <laughs> like I've. I've always known yes. about this world, but now I'm actually doing it and like immersing myself mm. in it. So it's been fun. You're loud. I was going <laughs> to say right. something so inappropriate, but <laughs> what came to my mind is like your balls deep in the spirituality. <laughs> I love that. I was like, you go, I don't know if we'll, we'll do this on the podcast, but Brendan and I like just talk about everything. Like we talk about our sexual experiences. We are not afraid to go there. How I had a happy ending in Bali. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> we should make that a next podcast happy ending in Bali. Like, like, so, <laughs> Gotta stay tuned. Okay, well, it's so funny how, like, even I, like, like you know, just blasely tell people, oh, yeah, no, I've experienced a happy ending. But, like, for a girl, mm to go to a place it's yeah so taboo it's like what do you mean like yes but it's like it's like putting on the dirty label be. when it's like it's just pleasure it's natural it's um mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know should i should i talk about the experience i don't know do you want to go deep into that because also like i mean i've never ex- experienced that but um, there's even just like yoni massage, which is particular massage where they're massaging your yoni and like massaging out the numb spots and like showing like this is your A spot, this is your G spot and everything. And like because so much trauma is held in your pussy and that's why so many women, they get like vaginismus where the, the vagina literally like closes up and you can't penetrate or um, like spots are numb and like you're not feeling pleasure because you've like disconnected. And so I was talking to my friend the other day and she said she got one and she was really heavy hesitant mm. to do it because um it was kind of like a, a, a service swap thing and like she wasn't like investing and she was like oh okay like I'll see I'll and she did it she said it changed her <laughs> life that she like squirted for the first oh. time during the yoni massage and like they went through and like 
um, de- it's called like de-armoring, like getting through the numb parts and like massaging it out. And she said her pleasure has heightened like this. five times ten. And now she squirts like regularly. Oh God, I would and I'm like, I would what? Because I've, I've never squirted, squirted and I want to do that. I, I've never felt an orgasm through penetration. Like I can only orgasm through um, mm. clit stimulation. So I'm so curious about this. <laughs> I know. Like, there's so many orgasms, like ace for orgasm, like cervical orgasm. Yeah, I think she said she had an ace spot orgasm, like, wow, as well. And, like, she had only. I... No, it's not. I don't think it's an anal thing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's a whole other thing that you can dive into. But, yeah. All this stuff because, yeah, I feel like not many of us, like, really pay attention to what's going on down there and like really like getting to know themselves yeah. and their body and exactly and you just like expect a man to do it for you but then exactly. you're not going there like How doesn't make sense to like tell your man what you like if you don't even know what you like or like mm-hmm. if you don't even know exactly. how to orgasm like where you like where you like to be touched um where you mm-hmm. like your yeah exactly. missions like even speed like for me it's like only certain positions exactly. certain speed like certain things you gotta like yes. work together as a team exactly. to make that and work communicating that to them if you don't know what you like yeah. and, and you haven't done it yourself and explored that it's gonna be very hard mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, it's really sure. hard to communicate sure. with men about that it's like even gonna it's gonna be even harder if you don't even know yourself but um no i love mm. all of that kind of stuff and uh, I've been wanting to do another one here in Bali at a yeah, place. but yeah, no, I recommend cool. if you come to Bali, go to Sway. Like I went there at night. <laughs> I booked one in at 8 p.m. This was last year in November um, in Seven Yak at Sway. And yeah, pretty much you, I I got, what's it called? The, the one, I don't even know what the name is called. Um, but you pick this sort of like oil and this sort of massage where they get naked and they go on t- like they they massage you Ooh. with their body like so the girl was naked she was like on top of me like massaging yeah. me with her body like this was that's so it hot. was so hot <laughs> like I'm not into like doing girls but like that's turning me on <laughs> yeah I've never done it before but um in a way it was so like she was she was in her 40s and early but she looks so fucking young you know these like a- a- asians oh, sure. are crazy yeah <laughs> yes it's gonna be us now 40 it's gonna be looking like you know 20 it's like now <laughs> we started off with like a body massage and i got the package that came with a scrub as well but it starts off with a body oh, I mean, luxurious with a body massage and then she puts oh no it's got the neuro massage i think it's got a neuro massage where she pours this type of oil that's sort of slimy and then that's when they like slide Mm. on top of you and everything and then like they're kind of like um you can hear their breath in your ear and they're like they get really close um yeah oh my god i'm such like a (laughs) sound like turn on person like if a guy isn't making noise like so like literally i will orgasm faster if you say the right things or like you know like damn your name Uh, it's like yeah like call me a good girl (laughs) thank you or i like to do you like to dirty talk like i like to receive it I like I do it a little bit, but like I'm more like rece- like to receive that. Like, yeah, I love dirty talking. Like I like to tell them like yeah. what I want to do to them and, <laughs> and what they're gonna Ooh. do. To me. I love when a guy tells me what he's gonna oh, do yeah, to me. Both. Back and forth. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Oh, getting hot talking about all of this. I feel so like, hot. I oh. wonder if someone can hear me next door. <laughs> oh my god, they're probably like, I want to get in on this conversation. <laughs> Yeah, you're talking a vibe and yeah no after the um the massage yeah like she was doing some magic stuff with her hands down there and i think she's a woman she also does it for a living um she just knew they know it better yeah, than the man knew where to go <laughs> i had to navigate down there <laughs> uh, and then yeah mm-hmm. i orgasm and after that she like put a body scrub on me and then she bathed me 
like in there's a there's a bathtub and she like jacuzzi yeah and she washed me off and then we were freaking talking about um like her family her kids like we're both naked mm. in there and it's just so bizarre because like I think no like a lot of people are like this is a bit awkward would, yeah people would think yeah. that it's weird but then like it's like natural like imagine before like we all bathed like in water holes naked like all just with each yeah, other and we were talking about a family and like Bali where does she live all of that stuff and then that was it they offered me a ginger tea and a watermelon and I, <laughs> and I went on my merry way <laughs> yeah oh my gosh I love that I Yoni um massage is on my bucket list yeah, of things to, to do it and tell try me what it's for sure like. I'm and then yeah. you're like, Brenda, I squirted. <laughs> <laughs> I squirted. And now the portal's been unlocked. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So cool. It feels like I've always wanted, like, I want to be able to, like, orgasm come through my vagina. Because, yeah, just I mm. what does that feel like? Like, I've only obviously experienced the other yeah. way. But, um, like, imagine, like, it would be, like, 10,000 times more amazing. I don't know. So good. Yeah. Yeah, same. And I'm like, I don't understand how people fake their orgasms because, like, I could not fake mine. No. Like, they're too <laughs> – like, you would not. Honestly, you'd be quivering. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. like, I just think people who fake, like, why would you give them the satisfaction that they – My gosh, literally. Like, could do that to you. Like, no, unless you're fucking good. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly and like a real guy like okay yeah he'll want to put in the work to make you orgasm but he's not gonna like be like oh my god you didn't orgasm so now he's like angry or something like I don't know <laughs> or maybe the girl's like oh, I just wanted to end I don't know it goes with their head because I don't I've like, never I done that because they're not actually genuinely connected I, I feel like you would naturally I don't know like would orgasm or like Maybe not all the time, but you'd be naturally so in it if you're super connected mm -hmm. spiritually, like, and everything connected to the person. Because I don't know, when I have had sex, I mean, well, I've had casual and stuff in the past, but, like, now it's just, like, unless you're my king, you mm -hmm. you can get my pussy. Yeah. My pussy <laughs> is sacred. <laughs> um, but, no, like, I feel like some people feel so, like, why are you having sex then? <laughs> If you feel like it's so it's bad really... that you have to fake it or like, like you I want agree. it to end. I'm like, I don't know. Like I've always enjoyed sex. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I haven't really had like a bad, yeah, experience. It's, it's like, it's like, it's been on like for, for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Unless I'm like tired. Sometimes at orgasm, I'm like, I want to sleep yeah, now just because I'm like so relaxed. Not that I don't want you, but I'm like, so like my orgasms literally like, I am like, oh. I, I can sleep now. I'm like out. Yeah, I like if I like, there's times where I have no. um, orgasm. I'm just like, oh yeah, like I'm good. Like, um, it's just, yeah, it's many fun. times. <laughs> like, like we can end it. Yeah, well, I'm not saying many times because <laughs> before, like when I first was like started having sex, I like couldn't orgasm during mm. like through sex, and so like that I just never orgasm, and that was like normal for me. I didn't know any different, but it was like fine. I didn't. I wasn't like having an issue, but like now it's like yeah. If you like, it's every time mm. orgasm. For yes, sure. I think I, I really think the more we come into ourselves and get to know ourselves, and like in just sexually too, like it's yeah, like, it's easy. <laughs> like if you're into it, like yeah, you would be into it exactly. And the guy, and you have a great yeah. guy who like would want yeah. to do that for you every single time, and yeah, like I've had guys be like oh like your orgasm is like the best part of sex like like seeing you orgasm makes me feel like a man yes, that's how it should be right yeah exactly because he's like oh my god I just gave you that much pleasure and like you know it's like so awesome just to hear that and like understand that men get off from your pleasure yeah, too like, I remember this one guy back in uni <laughs> he was he's like a surfer guy blonde hair curly hair and oh my we were like, yeah, having sex with friends first, and we always had this like chemistry. Um, and yeah, mm. he's like, no, I'm like, I'm doing you first, like, and like he he just had in his mind, yeah. like, I'm pleasuring her first, and there's nothing that there's 
there's no circumstance that exists that I'm gonna like come first before you. Like he he was pleasuring exactly. me first. He did this thing where he stuck to mm. my toe. But Wow, I've never like gone there into foot speed stuff, but foot massages. Oh like, oh, oh yeah, no, I've got foot massages. I know plenty of them. No, just not like sexually, like reflexology. Yeah, man, my mum was like a massage therapist. I didn't get all the foot massages, and like when I went to Singapore, yeah, Bali too. All the foot massages. Had a foot massage the other day, like. No, and then oh a $4 one, a $4 one for 30 Oh my God, that's the price of a coffee. Crazy. Like, okay, so that's not another topic. The package that I go to, that I always go to, it's like 140K IBR, which is $14 Australian. It's an hour Balinese oh massage, and then it's a 30-minute foot massage. Oh, so good. That would cost $140. Yeah, just for one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm, I'm living through <laughs> you. And like, I see like every, it looks like every day, like you're getting a massage or well, a manicure yeah, or like it's something. So, like even It's a lifestyle. It's like every single day. It's like a, it's like you have to. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. but yeah, just, I feel like here, like, oh, I'm seeing dolphins this Sunday. I'm swimming <gasps> with dolphins. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my In God. Lavina. That is going to be amazing. North Bali. <gasps> I've never done yeah. that. Please oh, film it. You know, I will. <laughs> you know, you I can. <laughs> exactly. That's not even a question, actually. Jump in the ocean, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah. only oh like. My God, that's going to be amazing. 340K, which is $34 Australian. That includes oh the God. three hour bus yeah. there, three hour bus back, includes the boat ride to the ocean where the dolphins are, sunrise. Jeez. Um, crazy. I, Oh wait, so it's in the ocean yeah, where like you're swimming you're with them. in the habitat. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I thought it was like in no. like a zoo or something. Oh my god! So they just find them and you just like jump the in. The location that we're going to is called Lavina, so it's North Bali, and so it's just like an ocean full of like just the dolphins that are like you know what are they call it. Wow, it's yeah. congregated. <laughs> congregated. <there>. We love <laughs> that. <word. laughs> And it's like, I, like lots of boats, right? And you're holding on to the bar and then with the snorkel on and you're like looking underneath and they're swimming like oh, next to you and you can see them and like maybe, I don't know, pet them. Put <laughs> them to my bucket list. Oh my God, that's so cool. Bali's just like incredible. And I sent you that thing this morning where it was giraffe. like the, they were having breakfast or something with the giraffe, which looked like the giraffe hotel yeah. in Africa. That's like yeah, super popular. I want to go there both. Do All the <laughs> But um, yeah, all, we need to align so we have like a vacation destination together. Oh yeah, yeah, we will. All the things we, we will. Would do. I feel like we'd be like the loudest in the room, oh like gosh. all the time. <laughs> For sure, we always. Are. I mean, this podcast is just like chaotic yes, in the best yes. way. <laughs> this that sex, freaking massages, freaking everything. Squirting, yes. sucking toes. Yes. <laughs> What's next? Me feels good no really? i think it's just like you know okay er, 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 oh yeah, roger yeah. stone yeah true i mean like a full massage feels good so then like yeah. why wouldn't someone Stop on your big toe <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> well, not the pinky no <laughs> is, uh, what's the word um her um not taboo her you know that weird kink i don't know yeah, yeah. Kink. <laughs> Friend is kink. Yeah. Like, okay, I interesting. would love because you went to that sex party. A Shibari yeah. show. Because I was gonna say that that is like my new thing. I don't I can't say if it's my new kink because like I haven't gotten it done. I just decided to mm. dip my toe in and like go to the performance, which if you don't know, Shibari is like the Japanese art of rope tying so it's like bondage but it's it's also like an art so you're using the rope to tie people up in these elaborate ways and you can also do it like aerial so that um one of the shows was this guy like fully tied this girl up with like hands behind her back and everything and then like hoisted her up so she's like in the air and then he dropped like he he um lit a candle and was like dripping oh hot God. wax like on her inner thighs and then he got like this knife 
and like scraped the the wax off because it like had dried and like it like scraped it off her leg and I'm like oh my god this is crazy and I was like oh they to my feet <laughs> I know it was like a huge knife too I'm like geez and she's like sw- she's like moving around like swinging around I'm like holy shit like this is like intense but yeah it's really cool and um I've been dipping my toe into more like tantra and um conscious sexuality and all of that and one of the guys that I met at um, a tantra event two-day workshop who I also saw at the conscious speed dating event, he kind of introduced me more and he said, oh, like I go to weekly Shibari um, classes where you can learn to tie and you go with a partner. And um, I think maybe like it looks really, really cool. And even just like seeing it get done, like you have to be in such a submissive like state of like receptivity and like they're just fully tying you up. Like there was this one girl like hands behind her back. She's like, face on the floor like ass is like like her legs are like spread like and you're like stuck like that <laughs> like you you like can't move but it's like I don't know there's something about it that it's also like wow like people think that being so submissive is like giving your power away but you don't understand how much like trust and surrender that you must have in order to like be like fully open not even knowing what the person's going to do to you how they're going to tie you up and like you can't even move but you are like enjoying it and apparently you go into like this zen state like a meditation yeah. kind of state because you're like so relaxed I'm like oh it just and I could see like the people while they were getting it done to them they were, you're like in this trance mm-hmm. you know what I mean because they're like so dropped yeah. in that because you can't resist like you know you have to have no resistance mm-hmm. in your body obviously in order to like receive that so I'm like oh like I feel like I'd be down to get tied up because I'm very, like, yeah. submissive in my relationships. So, like, not necessarily, like, I can learn how to tie, but, like, I want to be the person getting tied mm-hmm. up and then, like, see the vibe of that. Um, so, yeah, I might be going to some classes soon or being, like, a, a model for someone to, like, oh tie. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, it'll it'll yeah, be, like, a few weeks new, from now and you're going to be, like, like, Brenda, and, like, send me videos of you tied up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, on the bed, like, oh, my God, so you <laughs> I know, but like that's the thing. It's like I have so many different yeah. versions of me, like slut in the bedroom, yeah. queen in business, feminine, like housewife, like all the different things. And I love how it's like you, you can't reject all these parts of yourself and say that one cancels out the other. Like I get to be it all and feel free and give yourself permission to like explore all of that. So many of us think, oh no, we have to be like proper. And then I can't have this type of professional business and life. And then mm-hmm. I can't like be a slut and do these crazy things. It's like, yeah. well, why not? Like, you you have it all. Be, like explore all sides of your feminine. Yeah. So that's like my vibe and just exploring more of that. Yes, so, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love seeing you explore all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Would you be like into that? Do you think? Or, like oh, being yeah. tied up? No, I would love, like, do you, have you watched Fifty Shades of Grey? All yeah, I think I watched the no, I made the first and the second one. Watch all of them. I love it so much. All of the yeah. Just watching that. It I was like, hot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I would love to be blindfolded and like tied up and just, oh, just do whatever yes. they want to me and like not knowing. Yeah. And like my gosh, like yeah. imagine like tied up, like blindfold on, and he's like got a whip, and he's just like whipping it like close to your ear, and you're like not knowing yeah, where, when's he like gonna where? Yeah, like, like that yeah. type of excitement erotic excitement yeah, really, like you know how people say like oh it's just like the honeymoon stage for a relationship like i oh my I, god no. like, I don't know. like what do you mean like what do you do in your relationship that makes it like not the honeymoon stage go to shibari shows go to sex expos yeah. go to sex stores watch porn together i don't know like yeah there's just so much but you both gotta like take accountability like I feel like so many women are just like oh they're just not into me or the man's like oh this but it's like okay first of all are you turned yeah. on yourself 
are you still masturbating yourself? Are you still touching yourself? If you're not turned on, you can't just then expect your partner to turn you on. 100%. Like you dress up in hot laundry, you send him a nude text while he's at work. Oh, yeah. Like literally there's so many things you can do. Like take responsibility and you can still initiate that 100%. as a woman. Oh my God. For sure. I, love, I would love, I always in the past would always like dirty text, like sexting and like yes. oh my photo. Gosh. I love or, that. Like, um like a sexy lingerie photo or be like yeah be of me dancing nude and be like, Brenda, i've got a hard on while at work <laughs> so, like, yes. stop <laughs> teasing me you gotta get in trouble when i come home <laughs> yeah, and be like i gotta punish you you've been a bad girl <laughs> Yeah, that's, oh my God, I love that, like, turns me on so much. And people might be like, what the fuck, Katie? Like, like you are such a boss woman. I'm like, just dominate me in the bedroom. Like, I love, yeah, I, I agree with, I um, love being submissive to, like, yeah. I want them to, like, like pull off me, off me like, pick yeah, me up, throw for me sure. around, and exactly, do whatever you want like, to me. <laughs> like, I have no... So yeah about like surrendering and like you have me like uh, but like yeah. yeah a lot of people struggle with that they're like what do you mean like no man owns yeah. me well what are you like i want him oh to my god <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But like, because I know my power that a guy owning me doesn't mean that I'm now all of a sudden actually just yeah. his and I yeah. lose my sense of self and my identity and all this. And I think the most important thing to understand is, again, it's like that duality of, oh, so we are strong women in business. So we actually need to surrender and be submissive in our relationships. Otherwise, it's like, imagine if we were leading and controlling and and dominating in our relationships like we would be fucking so exhausted like it just is horrible <laughs> like no we need to have both especially as a woman you need to have some space in your life where you can just like surrender and be taken care of it feels so good too when you can relax oh, and have someone it? do something for you to leave you know like book something in make the plans you don't yeah. need to do anything you know you just like put music on look pretty <laughs> That's what I love to it. Yeah, he's like, I'm picking you up at six o'clock. Wear yeah. a cute dress. Oh. Like, my patty yeah, said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Already? Oh my God, I was getting so wet at that Shibari show. Because <laughs> some of it was like nude, because they had different ones. Like, one of it, like, he was like, take, he tied her up and he like took her boobs oh out. God. And like, yeah, he like got oh a bit God. nude. <laughs> I never see it was. I like because I've never been to a sex show or anything like that. And I'm like, ooh, oh my God. No way. Okay, like, and then the legs are like spread. And, and then this one of them, like they like tied her up, hands behind her back, and then like they put like a rope between her legs, like obviously like rubbing against like her clip. <laughs> so hot. Yes. Oh my god. Sounds like we're doing it together. Would you ever like the more? I've, oh no! I have yeah, a yeah. Like, what is this to be now, like diving more into like how normal it is to be sexual to like explore ourselves and to do it oh, in yeah. public as well and with people around. Would you yeah. ever like yeah have a threesome or like kiss a girl like touch a girl like I was able to touch that girl Ooh. when I had that um happy ending like I touched the clit I touched yeah. the boob and it was like it was yeah. intuitive like I just felt like I wanted to obviously because you're yeah. having a sexual interaction and so if you're not also contributing yeah kind of and like, like you're she's freaking touching your clean and you're fucking horny right so yeah exactly so you're like, like, like i want to grab that titty <laughs> honestly like women's boobs are like the freaking hottest thing like i'm not like like i'm straight but like women's bodies like you <laughs> worship that shit like honestly like when I see girls with a good rack, like yeah. oh my god, I know. Boobs <laughs> uh, like, are the like, best. Like, like I want to. I know, but it's it's our appreciation of like the the female form. <laughs> what a masterpiece! I'm like oh, have you been spanked before? Spanked? Oh yeah, many times. <laughs> spanked, choked, yeah, for oh, sure. Like, so oh, good. Like, I like yeah. to be on my ass. <laughs> yes. 
Oh my gosh. And you can get like paddles and With things everything. like, and mm -hmm. some of them, I think they have like cutouts and stuff. Ooh. So it has like a little, so they spank you and it leaves like a heart on it. On your butt. Oh my gosh. So many yeah. things. Yeah. But I just love how liberated we are in our sexuality. And I don't like, I, I'm not sure about you, but like a few years ago, I was had still so much sexual shame and, and all that. And opening up in my sex life hasn't just benefited me in my sex life, but it's just like open. Um, I have now like a wetter pussy, more intuitive, more just free. And people don't realize how much their sexuality ties into so many other areas of their life mm -hmm. and isn't just like so liberating to be able to have these conversations um who knows who's listening and we're just like so unbothered <laughs> when you started as a teenager like watching porn or like it like being exposed to this sexual world but i was 11 years old um yeah i was, I was so quite young, young too especially like because we grew up with the internet just like click of a yeah. button you could just like I yeah. Well, before it was like porn <laughs> magazines, like magazines. <laughs> but now it's like what? just search porn, and <laughs> there it is. Like especially from a very young age, I like learned how to masturbate. Like so, from such. Oh yeah, I was masturbating some... like yeah as like, a kid. <laughs> I, I don't know. I got in a way like cool. like if the feeling felt so good, but like because we don't know we're just yeah, following our so pleasure natural. which so is natural. like there's not no shame in that and so that's the thing it's like and it's actually easier because we're not mm. thinking oh is this bad or like I mean, we don't have as much blockages as yeah. like now we like understand we will say you're just following the pleasure like mm. same thing for me when i first started masturbating it was unintentional it was just like oh like mm -hmm. if this just feels really good and you're just following that sensation and it's a full just body experience. Well, now we're thinking about, oh, mm -hmm. can I orgasm this, that, and that actually yeah. pops it because you're not like fully just unhinted. And even with that, apparently like um, males in the womb are already playing with their what? penises. What? Oh, my gosh. And getting <laughs> erection. Literally. And it's like a joke that like the, a men's first toys is oh dick. Oh, my God. Because, like, in the womb. And they get erections when they're, like, so young. And so it's, a th like, how it's it's natural. Like, not saying when we're, ha like, having sex at that age, obviously, but just even exploring that and, and the sexuality, like, it, it's happening, you know. And if that pleasure is available, then what's wrong with really, like, exploring that? My first encounter with, you know, the um mas massage thingy, like, that has three different, like, like they're circled. I oh, yeah. I yeah, and I'm like, Ooh, wonder what it'll feel like down there. And so I, <laughs> oh I, my I, god, did you wash oh it? <laughs> oh my god, Sam, your pants is the episode. <laughs> no. on. But oh, okay, my okay. First, like encounter of orgasm was using that. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny. My wow. Mom, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And then I like quickly moved it, you know, and just like massaging my thigh. Did you think she knew? Oh my gosh. Our parents have caught us. Um, I was sending like nude photos on my vagina to this guy. Um, and then it, oh my you know how gosh. your iPhone syncs to your MacBook to your uh, photos. Oh <gasps> no! And because um, it was I was charging my phone, and it like sent all the photos across. The and messages. then like the photo album. Oh no! Photos of my vagina. <laughs> I'm like, what? I was just, and I was telling and I was telling him, oh, I'm just taking photos because I thought I had something down there. <laughs> the yeah. Guy, I knew it was up, but like. Um, oh funny. my god that is like so yeah. that oh my god i'd be yeah. so embarrassed I, I, yeah. wow <laughs> but like yeah if your parents are sexually open because like at least with my mom like we're pretty open oh, about you know these things we talk about it but yeah no like mm, yeah i'd probably <laughs> still be like <laughs> have you ever embarrassed texted someone like a sex text or a dirty text to the wrong person no i did that never done mom, that by accident oh, I, oh no it's always your I, was, I was at the time living in this in her house in the same house so i ran to a room and luckily her phone was not where she was it was in her room and she was elsewhere ran her room went 
Yeah, oh yeah, my I god, I deleted it. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, god, Brenda. <laughs> you need to be more careful. Next to not, I'm gonna receive a text, like some dirty text. I'm like, oh okay. Maybe Brenda is down to to do some dirty. <laughs> She's changed her mind. She's bisexual now. Oh my god, that is hilarious. No, I've never been caught anything like. I think when again I was like younger, like she caught me masturbating. I think, but like not like no, never sent anyone the wrong text. Never, no one's seen my nudes. That's not supposed to. At least I don't what think so. Would you say, like I can envision myself when I have kids one day. If I caught them, I'd just be like laughing or just be like joking with them. I'd be so chill. Like, like I would yeah. talk to them about sex. Every... <laughs> yeah, like whatever. Oh. Yeah, just be safe. That's it. And isn't that the thing though, right? It's like when you're not in the shameful environment, that's when you actually feel safe to express and to have these conversations. But if you're if there's shame, then they're gonna do it behind your back and that's and that's worse. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, so important to like be open, having these conversations, even like conversations, not just with your parents, but mm. in spaces like this, like on podcasts, online, so that other people feel like we are destigmatizing the whole conversation around sex. Mm. And so you're more open. So I'm sure like some people still feel like dirty for like sending a dirty text message or like taking a nude mm. photo. Like I've taken like, photos for myself just because like i think i'm hot like or in lingerie just like i need, I need a photo of this because i'm a, a sexy masterpiece you know what i mean like so I up my yeah. albums and there's like a sexy album <laughs> in there. sometimes i have to like <laughs> is there like private oh. if you just went on my phone i went to my albums it's all in there my God. <laughs> i love taking photos i have like lingerie photos in my phone but not nudes that everyone can like access i don't know about you but phone is like you know like face um lock with the court face lock face lock yeah oh, true like, no true gonna open it. i mean like i have my phone with me all the time usually um and like no one's true. stolen it yet I'm so, i guess i'm very trusting like i would get a good surprise and a good gift whoever stole it whoever whoever would steal it would be like oh i struck gold here so easy for us to talk about and like you mentioned like so many people like even i'm sure there's people that listen to this podcast be like oh my god <laughs> well they're just they're talking about so many, like squirting this and that yeah and i mean people yeah. might get triggered as well and even for what i have to say about that quickly is whatever you are being triggered by is actually showing you an unhealed part of yourself there's a difference between disliking conversations about sex because maybe oh i wouldn't talk about sex in a podcast that's fine but then feeling triggered of like that's disgusting you guys shouldn't be having this conversation it's unprofessional that is actually not about us it's a reflection to yourself of where you need to heal some of your own sexual shame which i actually have done the same too i used to look down on people who were overly sexual or who were even just embodied in their sexuality i used to think coaches shouldn't post bikini pictures because i'm professional can you believe that like i literally i remember this like big coach in the industry i was like she is her boobs are out i don't like that it's mm. trashy and i was actually getting triggered from that because i wish i could do that because i wasn't free my sexuality until i slowly started to unravel all of the trauma behind that and now it's like yeah i post my body teeny whatever online and i'm fine with that because that's me and that's my personal brand it doesn't make mm. it unprofessional so yeah yeah your triggers are your yeah. biggest teachers so important to question why 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 do you feel that way why are you judging mm. that person because it's definitely always like a mirroring back to you like something in you is unhealed or conditioning or something a belief you've been um yeah. raised to yeah believe or feel like it's wrong like when yeah. i was growing up my parents exactly. would be like my mom would always be like oh put on a bra like and i don't like fucking wearing bras 
Wow, really? I used to like go braless all the time. Like my boobs are bigger now, but I would literally walk around all the time like yeah, nips, on, oh my nips God. out. Like, I love being no bra club. Out, you know? <laughs> In summer, yeah, I don't wear a bra and for sure. My mom would be like, oh, like it's funny because her brother would tell her, my mom, oh, Brenda needs to wear something more conservative or Brenda needs to put a bra on. And wow. they would tell my mom and my mom would tell me, I'm like, Fuck you! Like, I mean, yeah, like, what? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm rebelling yeah, with my tits crazy. out. Like men or people, like what they yeah, they, they get do. uncomfortable. Like, it's crazy how, um, like even yeah, being braless is it affects people so much. Yeah, and it's like not even the cold hard nip. It's literally exactly. just the, yeah. like through the t-shirt it's or like through we, the dress, sort of. Like, like, they feel like it's shameful. It's like, like not proper and mm. it's wrong it's dirty or whatever or immediately you're a slut it's just yeah, a human body yeah um but yeah so many i love how both of us are so free now and like we, we just know ourselves so well and we just don't care <laughs> we're just doing whatever yeah exactly we're just fully authentically yeah. being ourselves and continuing further to liberate ourselves because we're constantly just doing the yep. work but yeah oh my gosh we've been recording for over an hour I feel like we should wrap this up it will definitely do a part two on other things but this unintentionally ends up turning into a sex conversation which I loved um but yeah thank you all for tuning in today um if you want to dive deeper into my world or Brenda's world then all the information is down in the show notes Brenda is there anything else that you wanted to share today with the start, audience start I would just I just this is my favorite like just start living your life like now like don't wait tomorrow next month mm -hmm. next year because if it's any testament for like for you and me and how we lead our lives like we've changed so much and like like a like just the quickest time like learning lessons and patterns and um healing our trauma and just being so open with our sexuality and going to all these events traveling the world like just do what you want now because yeah like the person you will be in a month now could be an entirely new person and yeah just give give this gift to yourself your future self and you, you'll thank yourself <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes to that. And I feel like that is everything that you embody Brenda on exactly like what you show and you are a walking, breathing testament to that in just that way you live your life. So thank you for just being an awesome human being and for coming on here and, and sharing this conversation. And let's turn this into like a series where we just have these yeah. chats for sure. So also DM us, let us know if you enjoyed this and if you want more and um, we'll bring you guys more of that and we'll see you all next time. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs>